If I conferred with our furry friends, man to animal, think of the amazing repartee. If I could walk with the animals, talk with the animals, grunt and squeak and squawk with the animals, and they could talk to me. Hello and welcome to Pet Watch, a monthly program about the services of the Williamson County Animal Center. We usually in the studio for our show, but today we're out at the shelter. We have a big event going on. We have Mars Pet Care on the premises with their Clear the Shelter event for two days. They're sponsoring adoptions. And Mars does a whole lot in our community, and you may have recently heard about their Better Cities for Pets program. They introduced it in Franklin in June with a pop-up park on the square. We had a couple of thousand dogs and their owners downtown learning about how restaurants and stores are becoming more pet friendly in our community. And another thing that Mars does is provides our shelter with all the food we have every month. We're part of the Pedigree Feeding Project, which means we don't have to buy dog food for our pets and they get the absolute best. Uh, if you didn't know, Mars actually tests their food at an innovation center in, in uh, Thompson Station and they have their corporate headquarters here in Cool Springs. So we really appreciate what they do. Today during the show, you'll see different parts of the shelter and different staff members and volunteers to give you a better idea of what happens over here every day at the Williamson County Animal Center. I'm here at the shelter today with Rana, who's one of our volunteers. Hi, Rana. Hi. Um, an important part of what we do at the shelter every day is done by people like you. And that is to socialize and exercise our dogs. It's one of the thing our things our volunteers do. Um, when did you come to work at the shelter? About a year ago, a little over. Okay, what, what motivated you to, you do dog walking primarily? Is that yes, your, uh -huh. okay, that's your focus? Uh -huh. uh, what motivates you to help dogs like that? Because it's a great facility. Um, the people that run it, the people that are the other volunteers make it fun. Um, the dogs are treated so well. I mean, when, when they play music for them in the afternoon <laughs> to keep everybody happy and right. calm, it's just a great atmosphere. It's probably the best thing I've ever done in my life. I really? That all really? The time. Now, you, you, you were a flight attendant. That was your career. It was. Okay. And you're from Franklin, and now you're retired and live here. So, yes. how many days a week do you come to the shelter? Uh, three to five. Okay. Depending. You know, that's the other nice thing is that you can come and stay as long as you want. Um, you can stay for 30 minutes or eight hours, whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, there's no there's no pressure on anything, and the dogs are all just so loving. There's always something to do. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. And have you gotten into uh, helping adopters who have, I have. Come, okay? Yeah, that's that's the probably the biggest joy when you see one that's been here for a while, and then adopter takes it and you get this wonderful feedback from the adopters mm -hmm. and how mm -hmm. much they love them and we know a little bit about their situations sometimes but mm -hmm. not always and and we, we just have such great success stories. Yeah and everyone always wants to know what's the story on this dog well the story is we're gonna find it a home yes and we're not gonna judge why it's here right or what brought it here because we know we're going to find it yes. a, a great place to live. So I kind of think their life starts over yes. when they come here and all that other is not important. Right. Um, now, when you take adopter dogs out with adopters, what kind of questions do they ask you about the dogs? What, uh, how, how they got here, Yeah. their age, what breed, all the normal things. Uh -huh. And then it's a lot of it is what we ask them. Okay. It's, do you have another animal at home? What kind of animal? Because dogs can be very specific as to what if they right. are, aren't good with small children, if they mm -hmm. aren't good with cats, or if they aren't good with other dogs. Because you want it to fit for everybody. Right. And people need to examine why they want a dog yes. and whether their expectations are real. Exactly. If they live in an apartment on the third floor, they don't want a giant dog that has that they have to walk down three flights of stairs and yeah. it needs a lot of exercise. Exactly. So w you have to match people yes. with their yes, very much best. So. I mean, it's it's just part of the best practices of any good shelter exactly. is that we advise. We don't always, if someone wants to adopt a dog, it, they may not end up adopting it. That's um, right. We may say, now let's talk about this. You have small children. Mm -hmm. We've, you know, this dog, we know it may not like small children. That's yeah. not a good thing. So, right. so uh, sometimes people come in here with one idea and they end up falling in love with another dog, exactly. right? Exactly, <laughs> that's happened so many times. Yeah. And, and the, the goal is that it fits for both sides. Right. 
You know, you don't want, like I said, somebody in a small apartment mm -hmm. taking a, a big dog that's high energy. There's some big dogs that are very low energy, but you've mm -hmm. got to find that right fit. Yeah. Uh, we have several hundred people like Rana who volunteer at this shelter. They do everything from walk dogs to socialize cats. We actually have two different volunteer training programs. If you want to do cats, you go to one program, and if you want to do dogs, you go to the other. Then you come back and do a one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, Rana has a green apron. You'll see our volunteers around the shelter. Uh, you start with green. Start with red. Start with red, start excuse with me. Red. Okay, so then what? Black. Black, and, and so you're the circle. supreme. You've been here. I've been here long enough. Long enough. But, yeah. Okay, she's done enough hours. There are some criteria she goes through. She demonstrates she can handle larger dogs and walk them successfully. She gets to move up with her apron color. So um, we, that's a system we have that keeps the dogs safe and the public safe and our volunteers safe. So if you're interested in doing what Rhonda does, and we thank you so thank much you. for speaking with us today to show us that there are things that people can do here at the shelter. Uh, we have other needs other than socializing our animals. We have needs for uh, graphic design. We have needs for people who will go out to events with us. We have uh, needs sometimes for fundraising and silent auction items. So anything you can think of that might help uh, our shelter, I'll find a volunteer position for you. I hope you'll come and see us at Williams County Animal Center uh, soon and investigate our volunteer program on our website, adoptwcac.org. We've moved inside into the office of Laura Chavaria, who is our shelter director, and she's playing with um, this cat named Moochie Moo. Yes. Who you call him what? Momo. Momo. He's my okay. Momo. Um, Moochie's been living in your office for? It's a year and a half now. A year and a half. Okay. And if, tell us his backstory. That's not, backstory. That's a pun. Not, not every animal has a story that comes mm -hmm. in here. Sometimes we don't know anything. But this cat has some special needs and a story. So he tell does. us about him. So his owners um, lived in China and they also had a house in Franklin. And he was a feral kitten that was loose, living in the wild. Um, and he was actually ran over twice. So the first time somebody had ran him over, his Here, back legs in, in China. Oh, in China. Mm -hmm. Okay. He okay. was ran over, his back legs were ran over. And when people were telling them, hey, you just hit an animal, the person put their car in reverse and didn't mean to run him over again. So he got ran over twice. Oh. Um, so he's paralyzed. He's got no um, control of his back legs. But you can see that he does move around. He does put some weight on him because we, um, the family, moved back over here permanently because their daughter ended up having leukemia, and so they had to surrender him because animals have, you know, bacteria and dandruff that um, mm -hmm. her immune system just couldn't handle. Mm -hmm. So we knew that he really wasn't adoptable because he has to be expressed every mm -hmm. two hours because he cannot go to the bathroom on his own. Um, so he's become my office cat and secretary, and he does a very good job at it. <laughs> and he's very playful. He and is. when. Uh, when the food, it's time for food, we he, see those back legs start yeah, moving. Now, it's how, therapy. How has his, how his leg movement improved and his strength since he's been here? What, what's been done to help him? So he's had laser therapy at Animalia. He's also had water therapy. Wow. And um, he has had um, Chinese medicine where they actually put pins in his fur. Acupuncture? Um, acupuncture, okay. yes. Yeah. So he's responded beautifully to that. Um, he's got no pain, but we are working on getting some more um, muscle in his back legs. He's kind of a... A perfect example of if, if if you're willing to dedicate the time and resources to a pet that may have been hit by a car, they often can have a full life and hit. How mm -hmm. long has it been since he was a kitten? So he was a kitten. He, I think he was six months old when it happened, uh -huh. and he's two now. So it's been a year and a half. Yeah. So he's kind of grown up in this office. He has. Um, and if we try to get him out of the office, he feels like he's leaving his comfort zone. So he loves it in here. And he has some rather odd office mates. He does. That's all, maybe the best way to convey your personality to our viewers is just talk about what's in your office. Okay. So his other office mates are? Four rats. Four uh, rats. Okay. Lucy, Lydia, Nim, and Boo. Those were all um, rats that were surrendered because their owners were moving to college. Um, and I love rats and Mochi was, you know, lonely. So mm -hmm. he loves to sit in his bed and watch them. Mm -hmm. like entertainment. So they get along him. okay. They do. Um, I get them out and have them out on my shoulders and Mochi and him will um, bump noses. They they love each other. So, so they're not natural enemies? No. No? No. No, because Mochi's getting his food sources from, uh, <laughs> from, from us. other places. Yeah. <laughs> He's getting them from other places. So the rats not aren't, interested. aren't afraid of him. You know, mm -hmm. they just have this And they're, the pet, they're pet rats. They are. They're, people think it's like a rat you found out, you know. When sewer. you think I have a rat for a pet, that's kind of alarming mm -hmm. to some people. But these are d 
what I would call domesticated rats. They're they raised are. to be pets. They are. They're not cat rats that we, we went and found somewhere. <laughs> They're Correct. Rats. And one has been in here since for a year and a half, and their lifespan is two years. So mm -hmm. um, Mochi will, you know, love them their entire lives. So are you planning to keep the rats or unless the right person comes along that Correct. might want to adopt them. It's very rare that somebody wants to adopt a rat. It, so that's true. I think they'll be here for a but while. But we get a lot of other small animals here. We, we, we concentrate a lot talking about dogs and cats, but just in the building today, in the lobby, we've got two birds. Two birds, a bunny, a guinea pig, and we have a duck in the back um, that duck. came in yesterday. Okay, yes. so a variety of animals are surrendered here that aren't dogs and cats. Um, and we accept those because we're we an open admission shelter for the county. And we accept pets. We do. And our mission is actually geared towards dogs and cats. Mm -hmm. um, but there's no other facility in the county that will accommodate taking in pocket pets. So we have expanded um, our services to include taking those in and adopting mm -hmm. them out. And so when a person thinks, oh, I think I might want a rabbit or a guinea pig, when they come in here, we can kind of educate them on what kind of socialization those animals offer because they they're different than dogs and cats mm -hmm. um, and what they give back and what's the care of them can right. be of a concern right. um, I don't know I've never seen too many bunnies or guinea pigs running around people's houses no. loose they're, they're mostly <laughs> crated they're you kept crated. in large kennels or bunny what do you call Hutches. that a, a hutch mm -hmm. yeah um, did you have those when you were a kid I did I had a bunny named Lily that I got on Easter Sunday and I had her for eight years oh my mm -hmm. and she was my first you know mm -hmm. trial at being able to be responsible and, and because they're vulnerable mm -hmm. you kept her in a hutch, a hutch. and yeah. you went out and played with her in a controlled setting yes she right. had a sandbox that she would run around in mm -hmm. um, but we would have to supervise her because we didn't want her to hop off Wow <laughs> um, could you give us a little uh, shelter update right now? It seems like we've been running at capacity for five, six months now. Yes. Um, kitten season is typically in the summer, and how mm -hmm. has that been this year? It has been bonkers. Um, we have over 100 kittens currently in foster, um, which is pretty, you know, normal for summer mm -hmm. um, months. Um, but we are on track to take in 1,000 more animals this year than last year. Wow. Why are they in foster? They're in foster because they're either too young or they're ill or they need to be socialized in order to be adoptable. Okay, so they're, they're basically not old enough to be adopted yet. They came into you without a mother in many cases, so they've been bottle fed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's another thing volunteers do. We were talking yes. earlier about what volunteers do. People who foster cats are not people you see around here mm -hmm. uh, helping adopters every day because they're at home feeding cats through tiny bottles. They are the unsung heroes because without them, the animals wouldn't survive. Um, and we get plenty of those in the summer. So um, we have tons of fosters that give a loving home for those animals to feel comfortable and get socialized and be, get used to being handled. So they are really the unsung heroes. And it heroes. happens with puppies sometimes mm -hmm. too. Um, we had several litters of puppies out this summer that families have been taken care of and the mm -hmm. kids have been involved and it's been a le great learning experience for them yeah. to know that they're um, raising a healthy puppy that'll be brought in and be adopted by somebody in the community. Mm -hmm. So um, I worked with a, a family recently that had been fostering six of our puppies and, and the two boys in the family were like around eight and ten and they had had the best summer <laughs> learning about those dogs mm -hmm. and just learning responsibility Get and back to the community right right and then they 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 were happy to bring them in and have them adopted so mm -hmm. um you have another program of fostering an older animal and you call I it do. phospis phospis yes. okay it's um, a combination of foster and hospice and those are animals that our veterinarian and i determine that um, there's still a quality of life left, but they are either too old or ill to be adopted out as a lifelong pet. So mm -hmm. we look for special homes where those um, animals can live out the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. And we would provide care and food until the quality of life would decline. So that means, okay. you know, if an animal has cancer, once we start seeing them mm -hmm. have difficulties, then we would make a decision in conjunction with the hospice parent um, on how to move forward. That takes a special kind of person. If it anybody's does. interested in that, they should call the shelter and talk mm -hmm. to them. Well, Laura, we've, we've enjoyed meeting Moochie, Momo, whatever we call him. <laughs> uh, and, and you certainly have the, a variety of interesting <laughs> things in your office at all times. Um, 
Moochie being the centerpiece. He and he's just such an accepting cat. He accepts he, almost anything that comes in here, including, he including pet rats. And we test uh -huh. dogs to see if they like cats with him. So he is, he, oh, he earns so his keep around here. He's a test subject. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's on staff, basically. <laughs> he is. A part, <laughs> part time. <laughs> um, he's like a, is he like the dog whisperer? He is. Maybe? Okay, mm -hmm. that's what we'll call it. I call him my Yoda. Your Yoda? He gives me okay. some good guidance. Well, we appreciate you letting us yes. get a glimpse into your life here at the shelter today. Absolutely. And uh, anybody who's interested in pets with special needs mm -hmm. or fostering or the FOSPIS program, we encourage them to call the shelter. Today, I want to show you the oldest ploy in the book is pull out a cute puppy for your segment. <laughs> and holding that puppy is Jam Stewart. Jam is with corporate, is the director of corporate communications for Mars Pet Care. Um, which I mentioned earlier is in this community in so many ways, but Jam's with us today. Uh, now you you all introduced the Better Cities for Pets program in Franklin back in June. We did. And we all were down on the square for that. Now you've moved on to Nashville to bigger a bigger area with a, a larger program. Now tell me how that's going and what your goal is in Nashville area. So I think you guys might remember when we talked about this back in June. The program is really fi really focused on four key things. And the program here in Franklin was all around the businesses pillar. Hang on, Omelette. Um, yesterday in Nashville, we were really focused on um, the homes pillar and the parks pillar. So a lot of the things that we announced yesterday were around um, making, making it more um, accessible for people who have pets in the downtown core area in Nashville mm -hmm. to be a pet owner, um, to provide more green space as well. Uh, right now, we know Nashville's having a, a, a boom in housing and development. If you look at that downtown core alone, there's about 3,000 dogs down there right now. And wow. when you think about the green space that you have to support those dogs, we're, we're mm -hmm. lacking. And mm -hmm. some of the amenities are lacking. Uh, we did a survey with the downtown, um, the Nashville Downtown Partnership, and we saw that residents felt that, you know, there were some gaps in in some basic things that they wanted, um, not just green space and dog parks, but things like waste bag stations and um, you know places to pet, more pet friendly places to actually walk your pet. Um, so we're working with a bunch of partners, including Downtown Nashville Partnership and of course the Mayor's Office, uh, Nashville Civic Design Center, a couple of developments, One City, um, which is a, about a 1920 acre mixed use development, Market Street, the Gulch to work together to collaborate on how we can become more pet friendly. I mean, right now, Nash downtown Nashville has more pets than kids. Wow, it, it's amazing that it, it, you've got the right idea. Let's talk about it in a new place. Let's talk about how to implement it from day one. Yeah. And let's also t talk about how to retrofit it. Let's go into this apartment complex and say, right. you got 400 dogs in your building. Right. Let's talk about what how we could partner with you to have a waste station, have a grassy area. Have you thought about that? So, yeah. so either way, new or already existing housing, you have lots of ideas. Yeah, Debbie, you make a great point because when you think about um, you know homes, first of all, you want to go into, when you adopt omelet and you go into your home, you want to make sure you're prepared and you're educated. You know what to expect becoming a new pet owner, whether it's a dog or a cat um, and if you already have a pet and let's say you move to a new apartment or a new condo or a new area you want to make sure you're going into a place that is open and accessible and mm -hmm. is welcoming to pets and you know in many cases uh, there's places that have a lot of legacy restrictions that ban either breeds or mm -hmm. a size of a dog or have restrictions that you know really aren't, aren't based on facts or science and so we're trying to help educate some of these big developments um, and property owners and property managers on you know some of the facts and you know what we found is collaboration is the key to so many things right mm -hmm. when you sit down right. with people right. and you start talking about the research and the facts you know you make progress mm -hmm. and and that's really what the Nashville announcement last night was yeah. all about and there's nothing more heartbreaking than having a dog for years and then suddenly you need to move to a a uh, smaller condo or downsize yeah. and you find that you can't take your dog with you that's just heartbreaking right and you've actually had stories like that yeah. and highlighted one of them in a video that you guys have made available on YouTube now yeah and we just posted that this it, week and it, it's a heartbreaking it story. is it is and and he ended up his solution because you can't solve the problem with the condo right away his solution is to volunteer and we, we interviewed and volunteer on this show today and about how much it means in her life. And this older man who couldn't take his dog, he ends up every day yeah. bonding with dogs at a shelter and finding them new homes. And so he's found a way to make that, bond. but we don't want that to happen. And we want to no. people to be more open-minded. And you mentioned breed labels. What is, 
Mars's stance or Mars's education uh, effort on that on that um, so subject? So we believe, you know, all all pets are great pets. Um, I think what what we need to do a better job of collectively um, is making sure people understand and have the right materials and the right facts um, so we don't have breed restrictions um, you know put into place and we don't we don't put up barriers for ourselves the mm -hmm. collective ourselves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so again as I, as I mentioned I think once we sit down and we you know talk to um, talk to teams and talk to developers and and start educating people y you start to make some progress it, it's again it, and it's a lot of I think long-standing or you know legacy yeah. regulations or regul uh, legacy policies that have been put in place and you start challenging those right. and you start breaking down those barriers and, right. and again you, you start seeing some movement which is which is great I actually um, was helping a friend and she had a problem with her homeowners insurance had a breed restriction she never knew of and after somehow after she got her dog the homeowner said oh we think that is this X breed which is in your policy deep down on page 45 yeah. And, and there are plenty that don't have that restriction, but it, it, it's a shame we have to think about that. Yeah. Because well, and how do you take that and flip it on its head? How do you get rewarded for having a pet? You know? Right. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so how do you drive change there? Right. So right. instead of having these restrictions, it's not just accessibility, but then you're actually rewarding you know, people who are going and um, you know, ad adopting dogs, rescuing dogs, or who have dogs. Well, you know, I had to submit, um, I had to label some puppies, and we, there is a place on every pup, every dog's card that says breed. And, yes. And sometimes adopters get hung up on that. And I told our shelter director, I said, let's just put mixed. Yeah. Because we don't really know. Nobody comes in here with papers, very rarely. Right. As a breed, um, this guy, who knows? Um, there could be American Staffordshire Terrier in there. There could be Boxer. There could be, um, I don't know what else. The, omelet you are the most precious thing I mean look at the end of the day these these guys are the heroes right? Yeah, that's right I mean these guys are making us happier healthier they're lowering our blood pressure blood pressure right they're helping us reduce stress you know they're helping kids in the classroom uh, and to they're label doing this so dog, many amazing yeah. things for us and labeling this dog is anything but fun perfect family dog is a crime it is a crime yeah and he could get labeled by someone who didn't understand yeah. um, and hadn't been educated. Right. So I applaud you for continuing that and we try to do it at the shelter level. Uh, we don't believe there are any bad dogs or any bad breeds. Um, and we just know that we'll find them a great home. So Absolutely. We, um, we appreciate everything that Mars does in our community. And what's coming down the pike is there, you've got the pedigree dog food line, you've got the Imes cat food line, um, any new, any, yeah. anything you can reveal to us? Well, any new treats coming down? You know, dog owners <laughs> love treats. <laughs> we, uh, we just launched a new brand called Crave. You'll have to check that out. Crave, okay. Crave. It's in um, like Kroger and the What is Nash, it? Is it Nash a dog Future. treat or a cat treat? Or? It's, it's a dog food brand. A food um, brand, okay. Which will have um, dog treats and, and all and a line extension, a full line extension as well. But that's brand, brand new. Wow, okay. It's great. I haven't it's great. heard of Crave. It's uh, fantastic. I just started using it, and I'm really, really liking it. I just got a new puppy. Oh, oh wow. What'd you name it? His name is Jackson Ryder. Jackson Ryder. And what's Jackson been doing around the house? He is a psycho. He is causing <laughs> all kinds of trouble. He is causing all kinds of that, trouble. It's something to think about. <laughs> when you get a puppy, you have to train it. You do. When and you, so we are yeah. we are in that mode right now. We are yeah. in, you know, house training, trying to get him house broken and, and simple commands. So that's where we're at right now. Well, I, you shouldn't fail with all the backup you have. I know. <laughs> you have, uh, you know, the, all the food testing, all the all the uh, people on staff that know about pet behavior. That's right. So you can I think just, I'm set. Just bring it to work and say, hey, <laughs> could you work with my dog for a little while? Well, he, he is precious, and I know your pet is precious, too. Uh, I brought this dog out simply because he, he, he might be one that might get mis, mislabeled, overlooked, um, assumptions might be made about him, but guess what? I think he's going to get adopted today. I think so too. And he's going to a family with four kids and they're all going to learn um, what a sweetheart he is. There's nothing in the world to keep this from being the most perfect family dog ever. Um, I appreciate your comments today, and I hope all of our uh, viewers will hey, start embracing all these Better Cities for Pets ideas, like 
using the uh, waste stations and the water stations and that kind of thing. And even going in restaurants, patio areas now are becoming more pet friendly. Well, the work here that uh, we've been doing in Franklin is a, a testament to that. Yeah. Where can people find more information about the Franklin and Nashville area, about pet friendly businesses? And if you go to bettercitiesforpets.com, there's a ton of information on everything we just <laughs> talked about, but also some tips and tools and a lot of research and materials that you know anyone, whether you're a pet owner um, already <laughs> or you're looking to become a pet owner, if you're a business owner, you know, really on um, on a number of different topics to just okay. help. Um, you can find it at Better It's all available to the public. Yep. Yeah, and we appreciate you providing our uh, uh, goodie bags for our doctors today with uh, starter kits and Absolutely. coupons and dog and cat food to get them off on a great nutritional start. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this segment today yeah. with Jam Stewart from Mars and all the other visits we've had at the shelter. And I hope you'll join Aww. us next month on Pet Watch. If I conferred with the furry friends, man to animal, think of the amazing repartee. If I could walk with the animals, talk with the animals, grunt and squeak and squawk with the animals, and they could talk. Winstead Hill is named after Samuel Winstead as he owned the property during the Civil War. It's also part of a larger range of high ridges called the Winstead Breezy Hill Range. It is approximately 840 feet above sea level and 200 feet above the city of Franklin. On November 30, 1864, Winstead Hill became the second battlefield of the Battle of Franklin. The hill was the vantage point of General John Bell Hood, and when he was tasked with engaging the opposing Union force, he chose that hill as a launching site. Atop the hill, two miles of open field were visible. There were a total of 20,000 men under the command of Hood. He wanted to be the first to reach Nashville, so he and his troops raced to the area. This resulted in a lack of artillery as the group carrying the heavy munitions fell behind the march. General Hood was known for being a particularly bold tactician. However, he acted rashly with an underwhelming amount of soldiers. Consequently, the battle at Winstead Hill was a failed attempt to engage the enemy and resulted in the near complete destruction of the Army of Tennessee. Today, Winstead Hill's beautiful 61 acres offer wooded areas and open spaces. There's a three-quarter mile walking trail, parking lot, eating area, restroom facilities, and above all else, a fantastic view. There are also numerous historical plaques located throughout the property, providing further information on the events that took place on the hill. Among the steps leading towards the top, there are stone markers that serve as a memorial for the Army of Tennessee. Atop the hill, there's a lookout point that features a map sculpted into a rock slab. It shows where the hill is located in relation to the two-mile area of Franklin below. The site was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1974. Winstead Hill is, and always will be, a part of the rich Civil War history of Williamson County.